<sighs> it is seriously started with Damien Cook. The guy that was meant to be the safe. 856k. Gun, hooker. We get you 60 points every week. Yeah, might get you a 50 if he doesn't play as well. Has a chance to score 100. Stopped you from getting other guys he wanted. He went for him. What does he deliver? 37! 37. Can we just scroll this and, and find his last score under 40? 41 at the end of, end of last year when he didn't have to do too much in 70 minutes. 48. 47. Oh, we finally have one. A 29 in 70 minutes again. Yeah, nothing in these 80-minute 80, 80 performances. Where are these shit scores? It's just in round one. Just in round one this year. We can look back at last year, 44 and 45. It didn't do too much, but what's going on here? 25 metres gained. Then he had one real, real big run, and that was it. Didn't even, you know, No tackle breaks, no nothing. Less tackles than he normally makes, and they you know, tackled a lot. Just crazy. What are we going to do, guys? Try not to panic. Yeah? His price of this, he scores in the 60s every year for a reason. It's annoying when you when you pick up a guy like this and he, and he stuffs you around first game, but but just remember why you picked him and, and that's what I'm going to be doing. And, you know, if he scores 35 of the first six rounds, then maybe you can worry, but there's every chance that he can he can go back and, and get a 90 or get a, you know, get a 70 next few weeks and, and do really well. But, yeah, that's all I'm going to say with, with Cook, guys. Try not to stress too much, but let's, let's go on a, a little bit of a brighter side. And look at some of our gun players from last night. So the two fullbacks were the ones that came out and killed it. And the troll looked great. He looked a lot better than he did last year, which where a lot of people had him and, and have decided to, to not pick him up this year. But the troll, I said, was probably, you know, five to ten points undervalued. Could hopefully turn into a keeper at the fullback position. And, and what he showed last night is definitely, uh, you know, keeper level talent. Uh, he, he looked great. Did everything. Had 11 tackle breaks. Made 180 metres, which is more than he usually would. Four offloads just look really strong and enabled being able to to play make for others, but also get his own as well. So to get 84 was amazing for anyone who picked him up. So I know a few people, uh, even my brother, we should uh, have him as the uh, NRL fantasy analysis man instead of myself. But he he started with Latrell, Pappenhausen didn't have Cook, so great start for him. And I'm, I think a bunch of guys had that combination. But thankfully, I, I spruced Pappenhausen all year and. And he did amazingly well, and, and he's been a, a mainstay for my side and, and thankfully got the 77 points. But Jai Arrow was really cool off the bench. So a 74 in, in his in his 45 minutes, which which was amazing. You're coming in with, with 29 tackles, five breaks, 176 metres with a couple of uh, two two turnover tackles, which is that, that new stat which seemed to be the most uh, important one that got, us, uh, got a few players some extra points. You can see that there's two there for Arrow, one for Murray, one for Walker. One for Smitty, two for Christian Welch, which is really cool to offset a bunch of his um, demerits that he had last night. So, uh, really awesome effort from Arrow. Just, I'd be wary of, of of rage trading someone really quickly and moving to an Arrow because what would I, what I would say is that is a perfect game to get 45 minutes, which I'd expect each week for him, unless he cracks into the starting side. But 45 minutes for for a 74 is not the PPM you're going to be getting from him. I'd be expecting somewhere near a one PPM if he's going to be coming in through the middle and. And looking really strong and staying injury free, but he's already at 604k, which is which is priced in the in the mid 40s already. So I'm expecting him to average somewhere between 45 and 50, and not have too much upside, especially after the jump he's going to get to be around 640k uh, after this round. Munster did what he needed to do. He scored his try and, and had a couple of nice moments, but after that he didn't do too much. The so 220 kick meters, 20 tackles. Pretty much a, a standard game for Munster. He's always going to have some form of attacking stat, whether it be you know five to six tackle breaks or a try or a try assist in there with his 200 or meters, 60 to 80 meters gain. So Munster, exactly where I thought he'd be. Didn't have to do too much in this game when they've got a lot of players like Pappy and, and Hughes and, and Smith and these kind of guys to do a really good job for your teams. Uh, Murray did his job at 52, made 49 tackles and didn't have to, and didn't get the chance to run too much. Um, yeah, it just looks like maybe he did a little, little bit too much work in defense and didn't have to when you've got like guys like Arrow and, and Colin Matungi doing all the work through the middle there. So that's something to, to think about a little bit as those meet again, but his work rate was awesome and, and got 74 minutes, which is great. Not sure if they might have ex extended his minutes a little bit because they were really close. They were, what, eight points behind and, 
and then I don't think he could, he could go any longer and, and keep up the quality, so that's why he got popped off at the end there for the last six minutes. Cody Walker was yeah did did what he needed to do, scored a, you know, a couple of try assists, but that's kind of where you'd expect Walker at being priced to six forty six. He's you know his average is close to fifty there, and that's what you're going to expect for him. Brandon Smith was an interesting one. Didn't get to do too much. He had one turnover tackle, but 91 meters and 35 tackles is what I would what I would expect from him. He didn't get to do and didn't have any attacking stats. So I'm expecting a 46 to be his base, and that's where he's priced at. But then you can expect some attacking stats every second week, I would imagine, with Smithy. So you know, with his dual position, hopefully he's able to maintain that spot for sort of at least the first month and hold some decent minutes through the middle when he comes back. But try not to panic trade him. You know, he scored where he's priced. Welch as well, priced at 40, so six points in value. I was hoping for him to, to get close to a 50 and, and just with a bunch of those demerits with the four missed tackles and error dropping the ball over the line if he, if he scores that, which he was very close to, uh, he could have got into the, you know, closer to the 60 mark. Uh, but 50 minutes is what I expected from him. 130 metres, 30 tackles would be his standard. Uh, and, you know, I wouldn't expect two turnover tackles each week, but I also won't, won't expect four missed tackles uh, with, with an error as well. So... Did exactly what we needed him to do. Anyone else in there? I spoke about Gagai being a, a top line keeper, and he looked they looked really nice down that left side with the troll passing to him as well. Reynolds was very low game. Cook, we've obviously spoken about already, but yeah, you know, 43 tackles, 25 meters is not good enough. Jerome Hughes had a low game. Kamikamika got 47 minutes off the bench, which was cool. At 380k, he's got a, a little bit of room to move, but not too much. He's going to be needing to get it, uh, his PPM closer to one to to make him a fair bit of cash. Uh, Tom Burgess, people ask me about, but yeah, obviously got hurt at the end, should be okay. Colin Matangi, 34 minutes, probably what you can expect. He's going to have to get, you know, 385k again. He's going to be getting closer to 35 to 40 to, to be viable. Hopefully he loses a little bit of cash and you can pick him up uh, if he eventually makes it into the starting side. Kimmel Graham had a, a slower game and, and these centers you want to look to, if you don't have them, to get their prices a fair bit lower so you can pick them up at some stage in the season. Jacob Host was a sad one. He, he was sitting at 32 overnight and, and got pushed back to 26. So this is the type of stats that I was expecting with someone like Host at, at 354k. I feel like he needed to be somewhere around 280 to make him worth it in a squad just with you know his previous game's experience and, and the kind of the amount of points that he's got. But 28 tackles with a couple of misses, a couple of errors, and 66 meters gained is what I'd expect. And, and both edge forwards only got... Uh, limited minutes. So, uh, Jaden Sewer got tw uh, 37 and Host got 64. And I'm going to expect that going forward because they look pretty good with having Marshall on there for that 50 minutes. Mansell was really uh, not good at all uh, in his first game, only 59 metres, which is really strange. They obviously had a little bit less ball than the Storm did, but that's still terrible and his price will drop nicely. Uh, and then you had Remus Smith, which is someone that I haven't been high on all off season and had a bit of a tough game with 12 tackles for five misses. With two errors, 57 meters was really not good at all, and you'd expect his meters gain to pop up when he moves to the to the wing. But yeah, it's a real uh, crappy score for him to start, and he's going to lose some cash, unfortunately, for those that brought him in. But yeah, that's that's my thoughts on the game. What I what I saw was a lot of you know a few tackles through the middle, and then spreading to the edges. I know it's the, the type of teams that they had in in the south. They they like to get get out there and spread it wide, and you know for someone like Cook, that the Storm are a team that obviously good in, in in the ruck position and, and slowing down that play the ball, which is not great for a cook, but yeah, we'll see how he goes uh, in, in the next game. But I felt the game didn't change too much. There was a couple of times you obviously kicked out kick out to the you know, when it gets kicked when the ball goes out the side, off the sideline, sorry, there, there's just a, a quick tap and, and play along there. But other than that, there wasn't too much too many changes. And you can see when Welsh came off, for example, after you know twenty three minutes he was he was gassed. So it was pretty quick. But they didn't really translate into fantasy scores. Like you've got the two fullbacks that went really good and, and a, a hard-hitting middle forward. And, and then, you know, guys like Murray, it was just a very standard game. And for a game that was meant to be a fair bit quicker, obviously a, there was a decent amount of points, you know, 44 points in the game. But just just a very low fantasy game, I would have thought. I'd expect a few more guys in the 50s plus, so... Yeah, if you're if you're lucky enough to have a, a Mitchell and a Pappenhausen, then great. But I, you know, I expect the the fullbacks to do really well this year. Um, again, let's uh, what have we got here? Let's jump back into the people's team and, and have a quick a quick talk about that. 
And we were lucky enough to miss out on Damien Cook. So happy days. Didn't have Welch from last night. So we just had Pappenhausen, which was awesome. We missed out on the troll, but we wanted Tedesco and Pappenhausen in there. Uh, so really good start for the people's team. We'll, uh, we'll keep this as a, as a regular update, but just wanted to go through that. And let me know what your thoughts are on the game last night, if, if it was uh, played much differently. I don't think there was too much different. It was obviously a really good game and, and dominated by the Storm. And, and this afternoon, I'm... I'm expecting a fairly close game in the Knights and the Bulldogs. Uh, it's then followed by the Broncos game, which will which will be interesting. And and just making sure, guys, with these uh with these bench for bench players that you have, just making sure that you've got the Knights players in your starting side first, and then the Broncos players uh, for the next game, and and moving someone like Tino onto your interchange just in case there's any late withdrawals or t or changes you need to make. Then you can quickly move guys between the interchange. Uh, yeah, and pick up any type of player. Where if, if you've got them stuck in the mids and you can't change it there, then and then you have to make a late change and you've got some issues. Just make sure you set the team up that way. But other than that, guys, hope you uh, hope you enjoyed this one and and please hit like and subscribe and we'll we'll keep some regular updates going on and hopefully uh, hopefully my team, my personal team is is does a lot better uh, outside of Cook. I, it has had Cook, Welch, and Pappenhausen last night, so a couple of good ones and and one not so good one. We'll see how we go. From there, hopefully, uh, you know, what I'll, what I'll say is I'm lucky I didn't Captain Cook, and, and let's hope Captain Cleary does really well. There you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll catch you in the next one.